Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, back with Blackstone Fortress and the Traitor Guardsmen. So starting off with Golden Skin, 09092. So there are two squads of these uh, Chaos Corrupted Guardsmen. I'm going to give each a different color scheme. One of them based off, based off of the classic canyon. The other based off a regiment called the Necromunda Deathblades that are from an image in an art book called The Emperor Protects that I picked up at the, my local Warhammer store's birthday last year. So I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between models quite a bit during this one so I can show both color schemes kind of simultaneously. And this will be not only for difference, any, this will be mostly tell each squad apart. So I'll start with a guy who's got a lot of skin showing. Or as much as these guardsmen are. And I'm also going to go for a dirty uh, scavenger look with the shading. So you'll see what I mean by that when I get to it. So just his face, his hands. And, well, maybe Traitor Guardsmen Regiments will end up being a thing in the future. Because with all the Chaos uh, upgrades coming out, it wouldn't surprise me if they end up just doing a new Chaos Codex, though. I still feel they should uh, finish what they started and release all the other codexes first before doing updated ones. Okay. So that's it for that one. I'll apply to the rest and move on in a second. Alright, next up is Terran Khaki 09122. This will be the cloth color for the Cadian inspired guardsman. Which apparently I'm running a little thin on. Here, yeah, sure. Well, short six, sure. So, when I say cloth, I really mean the cloth of the uniform. There's caves and ciliary cloth all over them, so. in camera for any of that. Else might be enough. So I may not have been in camera, I'll do another one. is a little more yellow ochre than this, but I'm just gonna go with this. This pants shirt tunic or pants and a tunic. Basically with armor bolted onto it. Black vest. Armor that's about as basic as it gets. Kind of a funny scene because he has a. Where does he? Okay, yeah, he's got a brace on his arm there. It's kind of a funny angle. Okay. All right, that's good. Get the rest of these. This uh, group. Oh, come on, focus, please. Cloudy 
cloudy gray 09089. This will be the cloth color on the death blades, but there's also some basing to be done here. So yeah, picking a guy with the basing. Go start there, go to place any, just a few rocks. And gray uniform cloth. Now the uh, artwork that inspired this color scheme has black armor and gray tiger striped or gray cloth with black tiger stripes on it. I don't know if I'll be doing the stripes or not. I'll have that figured out by the time I get to details. But I would be, if I do decide to do the stripes, it will be as a detail. concept art they have black armor but also gray helmets but I think I'll have the helmets match the armor and not the cloth okay bit right there bit right there all right now I need to to apply to the rest of what models stop Next up, huh, Olive Green 09035. And this is going on most of the armor, we'll say. Because these guys have their equipment augmented. I might do that one in the secondary armor color. I'd rather redo that. Because I don't think uh, spikes are Imperial Guard standard issue. Right now, here. Well, the helmet, that's one part. I think that can be considered to be mostly the same. Now, let's push older. Hmm. Okay, so bracers. Do that to uh, right grieve. Let's see here. And I think that's okay. So, got the rest of his team. I'll come back in a minute. If my camera will play nice and focus here. All right, now for the Death Blades armor, adamantium black, or at least their primary color. I would normally not use something this dark as a primary color, but, well, you'll see what I'm going for when I get this finished up. Oh, we'll do the sergeant. And again, this is a metallic black. thicker than most of the other paints I use too, but 
So, they have a lot of extra bits attached to their armor. Likely patchwork repairs and like and the uh, we'll call it a devotional icon on the sergeant's back. Again, the artwork I'm basing this color scheme on has this armor in uh, gray, but or has the helmet in gray, but I'm going to match the rest of the armor. Okay, that's pretty good, so go ahead and get the rest of the squad and move on. Okay, next, oiled leather 09110. This is going to be on both squads. Oh, let's do grenade guy for this. Boots, the bend layer on his last gun. Let's see where's the other end of it. Aha. Here we go. So pretty much belts and boots on this one. Careful where I did the green. I like the detail of the actual tread here of the boot. And he's just got a heaping helping of explosives all over. Okay, that's good. I'll get that applied to the rest of the squads now. Alright, now for another color shared by all. 09206 Tarnished Steel. Starting to get over the difficulties I have with saying that. I just don't know why I have all the difficulties saying that. Let's pick a guy. It's got some. Oh, this will do. So, this is going on the blades. And. Spiky bits on their equipment, which was likely added later on after who knows how long they've spent raiding and pillaging. And this particular sculpt, he has a lot of knives and blades jammed in around his equipment. I thought that was a pouch at first, but it's actually some kind of club or knife. So not only is this particular trooper a traitor to the Imperium, he has no shortage of sharp pointy bits. Chainmail that was likely added later to attempt to improve his armor. And these spikes look like they are welded on or bolted on. Again, that would be considered unsanctioned armor modifications. At least unsanctioned by Imperial standards. I'm 
make certain I haven't missed anything I want to do in this, and I have. Because of course, I've got this cape of chain mail off the back here. Again, the improvise and modify armor of that scavenger. Okay. Well, that's got that. So, get the rest of them and move on to the next color. We're coming along nicely so far. I'm going to focus them on. There we go. Alright, time to get the weapons now. Stormy Gray, 09088. This one's running a bit thin, but I think I have enough to work with. That actually might be enough. And the ball just tried to run away. Fun! Fun. <laughs> Alright. Eh, yeah, Sarge. Why not, Sarge? Obviously esteemed enough to have been allowed to take a chain sword at one point. And his pistol. I think it's a last pistol, but. I think some of these guys have auto pistols too. Not that it matters much because both weapons have the same stats. So it's really just aesthetics. Get his gas mask. Ah, uh, yeah, there, there is something else I want to do the grenade. much paint on there okay all right let that dry while I hit the rest of the guys and we'll get back in a minute all right zero nine one four three yellow bone this is going to go on the skulls on the sergeant there are also uh, several guardsmen wearing uh, hide cloaks as in animal pelts so we'll go on that as well Workshop sure does like their skulls. And I'm picking one of the uh, Death Blades models just because I've done so much on the Cadian inspired ones. And we'll just grab a Guardsman do the pelt here so I can show that part off. So, pretty much this part, but not the cloth coming off the arm, that's going to be red when I get to it in a minute. Now in terms of the uh, lore, Chaos Lord Obsidious Malix was at the Battle of Cadia, but some weird explosion happened and he found himself not only at the location of the Blackstone Fortress, but on a collision course, and the fortress basically ate his ship and his crew, including several regiments, I believe, of traitor guardsmen, at least I think it was regiments, wound up getting co-opted as essentially an extra layer of security by the fortress itself. All right, and that's got that, so move on to the rest, come back in a little bit.
Well, just got a couple base coats left. The next one is, where is it? 09002 Deep Red. Yeah, just picking this guy at random. So, get that armband there. And yeah, the pelt is still kind of wet, but I'm just going to roll with it. And the mask pulled up over his face. See anything else? Not on this one. But basically the red's a secondary cloth color. I'll do another real quick. Yeah, more prominent here. Although next time I decide to do two models back to back, I should probably do one from each group instead of two from the same. Okay, let that dry while I take care of the rest of the swab. Alright, second to last base coat, I believe, Shield Brown 09161. So a lot of these weapons have some wood paneling on them. Now, I'm going to pick this guy. Now he has a shovel, but I want you to think about this for a minute. So not only is this the flamer, but he has a pelt, a flammable animal hide. And just think about this. What kind of madman puts wood paneling on a flamethrower? I'm going to let that sink in while I uh, finish this. Yeah, just on the front, I guess that's fine. He also has this shovel on the back. So if you heard a clunk, that was your brain dropping the clutch over, you know, a flamethrower with wood paneling on it. To a certain extent, some of the other weapons, it makes a little sense on as a decoration, like here on this last gun, but again, wood paneling on a flame thrower. And I'll go ahead and take care of the rest of the guys off camera, and come back in a bit to finish it. Oh man, come on, focus. Huh. Alright, last base coat. This is mostly some little details here. Old bronze, 09197. Since I've given so much attention to the canes, we'll do the Death Blades Sergeant. So, that iconography on his chainsaw, including the hilt. Carefully getting the same iconography on the other side. And this, that was not easy, by the way. It takes a, a lot of practice to be able to you know, paint something you can't completely see. And I thought he had another, like a chaos icon somewhere on him, but alright, whatever. We'll just go ahead and pick out the skulls on his pistol. And just to do one more, we'll pull our flamethrower guy out again. I thought he had a chaos icon 
someone, but I guess not. And I'm going to A, make sure I don't have this too watered down, just get this part here. And let you and just bring up again wooden paneling on a flame thrower carried by a guy wearing a furry pelt. Does this guy realize how flammable he is? Okay, there's a few miscellaneous details on other models, but we're just about. We're almost to shading now. Come on, trying to. All right, never mind. It's not. All right, time to start shading, and there's only going to be three shades for all of this this time. Zero nine one two five scorched metal is first. This gives a nice rust effect, so we're gonna put that on all the metal because these guys, they're scavengers. They're defectors. They're scavengers and. His weapons should stand out a little better, so half about half water, half paint. It's gonna be a standard. So I shouldn't say all the metal because of the metallic black. That's not going to have that metallic black won't have this. But his sword, which looks like it was just made out of a piece of scrap metal. And the spiky parts of his armor, which would have been made in the field, including that chainmail is just barely peeking out under there. That spiky plate there, belt buckle. Okay, and that's got him. So apply to the rest. Back in a minute. All right, time for the second shade. Now, excuse me for this one. I'm going to do a mix. I need to pull out a tool. I forgot to get ready ahead of time. So I'm going to take a palette knife. Take a dot of pure black, 09037. Okay, that'll be enough if I do this properly. And then Woodstain Brown, 09160. Using about oh, four to one wood stain per black. And a brush is not going to mix this up as nicely as a palette knife will. So just stir it up. It's nice and even to be easier if my palette wasn't so uh, covered in old paint. It's solely my fault. So. I just need to do a better job of cleaning this thing right away. That's got it pretty good. I'm just gonna clean my knife off here. And I'll do one model from each squad. And this going to go on everything else, including the flesh. I need to thin this out a little more to do what I need to do, but they're just going to look like dirty vagabonds. Because that's the look I'm going for. These guys are bereft of even the 
fairest of amenities that the Imperium bothers to give its soldiers. The Imperium really does not respect the Guard like they should. And quite frankly, their tactics would be considered criminal by today's standards. But, regardless... Keeping my brush really wet here. And I'll be doing individual highlights on all the colors, but the purpose, again, of this shade is to just make it nice and muddy and grungy and grimy because these guys have been living in filth and living the lifestyle of a scavenger. Pretty good for this fella. Do it to one more. Oh, how about him? You know what? Actually, he's a guy with a gas mask, a grenade guy here. So, yeah, I'm wanting it to look like mud. It's ambiguous when exactly, well, these guys turn on the Imperium. It's ambiguous how long Abaddon and Com or not Abaddon, but Malik's and company have been uh, prisoners of the Blackstone Fortress. But, uh, imagine they've been there a while. Yeah, the Abaddon announcement, uh, he's fresh on my mind. The uh, new sculpt looks amazing. Well, I'm going to try to avoid nicking any of the metal. It won't matter too much if I do. It will just help to convey the whole dirty aspect here. Okay. Alright, that's decent. We'll let that dry and move on a bit. Gotta figure out how to get this camera to focus a little faster. Alright. Stained Ivory 09142. The only thing pristine on these guys are the skulls they've collected. So, I'll just take care of both of them on camera here because it's not going to take long. Shade on the skull. Sergeant. Well, that happened. I guess that wasn't completely dry, but that's okay. That's fine. And while I'm at it, Stormy Gray 09088, I'll get the rubble. of uh, the darkened brown made the whole thing look nice and dirty so that worked get the rest off camera and then once everything's dry can uh start some details and highlights okay pure white 09039 i can start on goggles and eyes there are no lighting effects on these guys so i don't have to worry about that 
Let's go ahead and do them all on camera here. So teeny tiny brush. And just a little part of me says maybe I should be doing this in gray. Yeah, those his bandana goes right up to his eye. So, and this wash made him look dirty without making him look uh, offensive. You know I'm talking about blackface or that's just that's ridiculous, but um looks like I avoided uh, doing an accidental racial slur. Yeah. I mean, I I collect B grade movies, so I've got a lot of stuff that, from the fifties and sixties, and there's quite a bit of racism in some of those. We need to acknowledge that this is a thing, so we can, you know, move beyond it. Acknowledge the past. Be aware this happened. Try to move beyond it. Make ourselves better. But yeah, unintentionally doing blackface on these guys was a major concern when I tried that wash, so it looks like it worked out. Yeah, I Yeah, I've I've got pretty racist parents, so trying to get over that, that's um I love my parents, but um that's something that just it's it bothers me a lot. It really does. They'll never change. So all I can do is, you know, not pass that on to my kids when I have them. Yeah. And there's another sculpt where the bandana goes right up to just below his eyeballs. All right. Gonna let that dry, then do some lighting effects and lenses and get some pupils and gun barrels and other things that need to be done in straight black, and then I can start highlighting. Okay, lighting effects are next. Blood Red 09003. Which is clogged up. Badly. My, this is gonna get irritating. Okay. There we go. Maybe. Okay. There we go. Got a little dot. Tiny dot's all I need. I need to pick out the guys with the gas masks. And that out to a wash. Just apply. Grenade guy, sergeant, and of course our very flammable looking flamethrower trooper. Again, wood paneling on a flamethrower. We'll just get them all. Sarge. There's a Sarge. Okay. 
and pure black. There it is, 09037 again. I'm going to have to go buy paint tomorrow or before I do any more models, whatever comes first. Carefully dot in pupils. And gun barrels. Yeah, the whole. The whole racism rant from earlier is just something that's been bothering me for a while. Not just uh, the racism stuff in the news, but you know. My parents out bringing and trying to get over that. Or be better than that, but... I also noticed, um... On that topic that... I have a single Age of Sigmar model coming out that was one of the, uh, 500 store models, that, uh, Bladegeist Revenant. And while I have, don't feel like, uh, playing... Age of Sigmar at this time, I might. But I noticed that one of the uh, free guild wizards looks an awful lot sculpt wise, like a uh, KKK robe. That's something that maybe needs to be rethought, like sooner rather than later. They're doing all this reworking, rebranding. Now's the time. I just was kind of baffled of that sculpt. Yeah, uh, I've got a lot of racist co-workers too. It's, it's been a very strange week for me. Frustrations at work. Racist rants. And all that came to mind because I was worried about unintentionally putting blackface on these guys when I tried that wash to make them look dirty and grimy. <sighs> boy. All right. And his gun looks a bit like a, uh, Uzi submachine gun. Guy. Okay. Once that's dried up, I can do highlights. All right, time to start highlights. Golden highlight zero nine zero nine three. So I'll do another one has got a little more of this showing. Yeah. 
is 400 or so. Even with the highlight applied, it still looks like he's really dirty. Which is good. Again, they're living in filth, so. All right, get the rest off camera. All right, next up is, if I can find it, where I put it. Where did I put, oh, there it is. Khaki Highlight 09123. This will just go on the Cadian inspired troopers. Let's see if I can. There we go. Okay. is working reasonably well highlighting it but it still looks fairly dirty well kept which is exactly what I'm going for okay well, now we'll get the rest and then move on to the next color All right, now for the other squad, Misty Gray 09090. Actually, I can put this on some of the on the rocks too. So let's pick a good one. Got the sergeant here. Why not? So I'm not going to do the tiger stripes on these guys after all. That's so. Let's go with the gray highlight here. Yeah, this, this is actually really close to what I was hoping it would turn out like. It looks dirty. And yeah. So. Around the, because uh, that's cloth around his neck. All right, get the rest of the squad and move on to the next. Come on, focus, please. Next up, burnt orange zero nine one one one. This is actually going faster than I thought it would in terms of how long this video is taking. So yay! It means I can get the next one out all the sooner. Yeah, he's got a decent amount. So doing this before I hit the armor. Except I wasn't on camera for most of that. Gotta be careful on that. Alright, well, since I wasn't on camera for most of that because I didn't catch myself, I'll do another one. Seem to be mixing colors here unintentionally. It works. I mean, these guys have grungy equipment because that's all they got. All right. So you get the gist of it. Finish up the rest and move on. <clears throat> Pale Olive, 09036.
where this wouldn't work out, but it is. This look, looks nice and weathered and faded out. Okay, get the rest of that squad and then hit the armor on the next. 09205 Black and Steel. Yeah, he's a decent choice, isn't he? So not too bad for my little experiment. Okay. Hit the rest of his team and uh, move on. Alright, next let's go ahead and do Creamy Ivory 09144. I'm gonna do two models. First is gonna be one of the sergeants with all these skulls. reason for doing two models is because there's going to be big differences between them. Now, the flamethrower. And you can see the difference between that the shading makes between the uh, skulls on the officer and the pelt on the flamethrower what a difference that your shade makes right zero nine zero zero three blood red and this time this is getting pulled out for the cloth or the secondary cloth there yeah this one's okay he's got a good amount of it on him Yeah, looking good there. Okay, 09089 Cloudy Gray, getting there. This one might be almost... Oh, no, I think I'm okay. I think I'll have enough to do what I need to do here. Just the one little bit on him. Well, actually, not too much on any of them. But that's more or less it. All right, move on to the next. All right, true silver zero nine two zero seven. I want to do one of these guys charging with his sword because it'll stand out a little more for the purpose of a uh, video here. So first off, I'll get the uh, grieve. Shoulder armor. This uh, scorched metal as a shade is what really helps to give the impression that this metal is rusty, but still serviceable. Okay. I'm just going to apply that to the rest of the uh, guys now, but we'll get there. Hmm. 
Another weird error. We'll see if anything comes of it. Driftwood Brown 0962. It's got two, maybe three left. And then we're going to be done with this highlighting. And I can base and finish up. So, as far as this is concerned, okay, I'm going to need a uh, brush. I forgot to grab one. And because it's still hilarious, get his shovel and his wood paneled flamethrower. That is never, that's, that's going to take a while before that gets old for me. <laughs> Again, wood paneling on a flamethrower. All right, tarnished brass zero nine one nine eight. Get the iconography on the chain sword here. Skulls on the pistol. Chaos Icon, I was not on camera for any of that, oh boy. Skull and the last gun. The end of the flamethrower. And I hit the rest off camera. Alright, last bit of paint, pure black, 09037. And switching over to a flat head brush, if I can get a grip on it. Just gonna go around at the edge of the bases. To, oh boy, the yelling downstairs is starting again. Oh boy, well, I'm almost done. So, so here we go. Just give me a nice, clean finish on the bases. And once I've applied that to the rest of the squad and it's all dry, I can uh, get the towels on it. All right, time to base. So, plenty of white glue and water. Well, that may have been a little much. Well, that might be a bit much, but I have a to total, <clears throat> excuse me, of 14 models to base tonight. So, I'm not going to skimp on the water either. Now, my basic material is rock debris, also called talus, and it is a. I use a mix of coarse, fine, and medium. And where's my brush? I need to use. There it is. So this stuff will, you know, gunk up your brushes sooner. So just use one that is not your favorite. Use your least favorite, or one that's already kind of on its way out. Just carefully paint around the feet of the model. This step is the same for just about every single model I do, but I only get better with practice, and that's about all there is to it. Really need to be more mindful of the camera. So, give it a dip in the basic material. Taking a spare brush that is dry, just lightly dust it away from areas you don't want it. And this is going to have to set for a while before I seal it, but just need to repeat that process for the remaining models. Okay, now that, that has had time to set, the last step is to seal it with a brush or spray on it.
glass eyedropper and apply. Just carefully dribble it onto the base. If you don't give it time to set first, this will just push it around, but it will seal it and give it a rock hard finish. And that's it. Prayer Guardsman from Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. And I have just four videos left before I am completely done with the base set of this and can start playing. So, uh, Chaos Beast Men are next. Until next time, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games signing out.